Next, we will let the tiger out of the cage, Mr. Raskin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's disappointing me that one of our esteemed colleagues chose to recycle debunked partisan dogma about defunding the police when it is his party that voted to oppose $350 billion in the American Rescue Plan that the majority used to fund the police and the firefighters and the first responders and the public health infrastructure. And they voted no. They voted not to fund the police and the other public employees. It's his party um, that had a couple dozen members who voted not to award the Congressional Gold Medal to members of the Capitol Police Force who risked their lives to defend our lives on January 6th against uh, a lethal, um, deadly, violent insurrection unleashed, unleashed against us. So spare us the phony lectures about defunding the police, because everybody knows who wants to defund the police and who wants to defend the police and ask any of the 150 cops who were wounded, hospitalized, and injured on January the 6th right here at our own house. But it's disappointing me because this is an issue where we can have real bipartisan consensus, and we do. Take um, Fifth Circuit Court Judge Don Ouellette, a Trump appointee who has now distinguished himself as a strong critic of qualified immunity, which he says smacks of unqualified impunity, letting public officials duck consequences for bad behavior, no matter how palpably unreasonable, as long as they were the first to behave badly. So uh, it's a, a remarkable doctrine that has evolved up, totally made up by judges. Now, Judge Newman, um, you, you said something which I thought uh, had penetrating lucidity to it. Um, does the problem of qualified immunity go away entirely if we just decide to hold municipal employers accountable in respondeat superior fashion for the actions of their employees uh, in tort? Because the way I see this is that uh, by, by absolving their employers, then people want to sue the cops. But of course, the cop making fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year uh, is not is not really going to be able to pay um, if they beat the hell out of somebody. Um, and so then we've constructed all of these perverse doctrines to try to protect the cop, but we're avoiding the underlying issue, which is that there's no incentive to change the overall culture of policing in certain departments where they've given license to that kind of conduct. So would you just elaborate what you said before? Would the problem of qualified immunity go away if we correct the decisions that have immunized local police departments and states and uh, counties? Sure. Uh, whether it goes away would be entirely up to the legislation uh, you all came up with. Um, you could make employers liable and keep qualified immunity or you could make employers liable and abolish qualified immunity. So whether it would go away depends uh, on what you do with qualified immunity. The point is, once you create employer liability, you don't need qualified immunity. You don't even need liability of the police officer. But if you kept it, the, the plaintiffs would sue the, uh, the uh, employer. So if you kept it, it would probably be uh, almost a, a non-issue. And if you abolished it, then obviously it's a non-issue. Which way you go is up to you. But if you create- Am I recalling correctly that it was the Monell decision which said that the localities are not responsible? Uh, in okay. Not responsible unless they meet the, the, the ridiculously restrictive test of a, um, a policy of per, uh, uh, perpetrating misconduct. And, and the cities don't do yeah. that. Well, look, I mean, I, I just think this is something that cuts against the, the fundamental conservative principles and liberal principles, and we've got to uh, deal with this problem quickly. And I thank you for having this hearing, Mr. Chairman. I yield back to you. Thank you, Mr. Raskin.